Hey everybody, it's Shannon from Pitch Posh Reselling. Um, I'm about to just record now the what sold for this past week. I think it's December 11th through the 17th. And it was so much of a better week. It was really, really good. I pretty much showed you everything. There are a few on Poshmark I didn't bother. Um, they're really low price stuff I just want to clearance out. I have mixed feelings about showing the good and the bad. Partly, I don't want the video to be like so super long, um, but also I, you know, sometimes it's good to see the duds as well. So I think on regular weeks when it's a little bit slower, I will show you some of those things. Um, but we had quite a few sales on eBay, quite a few on Posh. Now, interestingly, Depop was pretty dead, Etsy was pretty dead, and Ruby Lane was pretty dead. So, um... I'm not really surprised. I remember when I was running the vintage shop on Etsy and paid a lot of attention to that and had really good sales and consistent sales with it. It December fourth quarter was like no better than than any other time of the year. And then it seemed like January was actually pretty good. So our sales were up, you know, on eBay, they'd be up fourth quarter and still up a little bit in January. A lot of vintage selling that we did, did happen in January. Also, sorry, I had a little tickle in my throat. Um, also, I spoke to one of the big sellers on Ruby Lane that I'm friends with, and she usually has between like 2,500 and 3,000 items in her Ruby Lane shop. And that's her only, her main income at this point is from Ruby Lane. And she just said, oh yeah, here we go, December 12th or 13th or somewhere in there. She said it just goes dead. And so she said it was kind of right on time this year. And I asked her when it usually popped back on and she said she didn't, she hadn't noticed any particular pattern, but I am kind of expecting this week to be slower than last week. Um, like I said, we had such a good week on eBay and Poshmark, and that probably blows out all my theories that I came up with last week about why sales were slow. So I think we just happened to be on the right side of the moon with eBay, and we've been actually listing a lot more. My husband's listing with me quite a few days, and it's just combined. We, you know... Things opened up, people were buying a lot, especially this past weekend. And um, I just think naturally this week will be a little bit slower. So that's fine. Poshmark, I did put a little bit more effort into um, delisting and relisting some stale items and things like that and sharing a little bit more on the weekend. And I did get some more sales, I think, because of that. So anyway, that all to say, um, that's just my intro to today's what sold. We're going to start off with eBay as usual. And um, as usual, give this video a thumbs up if it helped you at all. If you learned anything from um, the items that I sold, you want to leave a comment. Let me know if there's something there that surprised you or that you never buy or, you know, things that you like to sell as well. Anyway, thanks so much everybody for watching and we will move right on into the sales. Next item, I just love vintage men's sweaters. This is from the 60s. Um, it was like Kazo or Kazo knit, and it had a really awesome label. You can see the space needle on it, and it was an extra large, which was nice. It was a nice heavy duty um, wool sweater, cardigan zip up brown sweater, and the feedback I got from the buyer was, wow. <laughs> so I guess that's good. And then I sold this jacket, like a, a chore coat, a barn jacket, the diamond pleating. It was Brooks Brothers. I did find this in a thrift store near me. Um, not exactly, not exactly a Montana look. To me, this is more of a New England farming horse kind of look. And it's Brooks Brothers. And anyway, I paid less than $10 for it. And we sold it for, it wasn't $89.99. It was 10%. So I've, all my prices this week have the 10% uh, 
um, coupon and then unless I tell you otherwise. So it's $89.99 minus 10%. It was a really nice coat. It was in really good condition. Like I said, it was Brooks Brothers. It was Primaloft, which was nice. Kind of a, yeah, and a good, good size, size large. So I actually found a Lauren Ralph Lauren one that looks very similar to this. And I had that one first and it's still listed. So I found this Brooks Brothers one afterwards and it actually sold first. So nice price on that. 80 something bucks. Okay, hats. You've seen in some of my hauls, I like to pick up different baseball caps. At Goodwill, generally they're about $2 at the most. And then I have a little um, outlet clearance store thrift in my town. The local um, thrift store has a couple stores in the area and then they have what they call a clearance center. So it's basically like the bins. And here's a little video. I'm going to pop up here. It's a video of my husband and I went there together this past weekend. And so you can see it's just a tiny little room and it's got a handful of bins and some shelving of different things. And I've been going a little bit more regularly and um, I've managed to find some interesting things that have sold fairly quickly. And the pricing at the bins is um, a large black garbage bag full is $10. And then a smaller bag, you know, half of that is about $5. And then if you go up and you just have like, I know a handful of things, he might be like $3 or $2. If you buy like one thing, it's like a dollar, right? So it's like the more you buy, the cheaper it gets, but it's not based on weight. And so it's kind of fun. I mean, there's a lot of junk there, but we dig around and, um, I find some hats there and some shoes and things like that there. So this was from Goodwill. This was not from there, but I do have some other um, other finds or sales from this week that came from that clearance center that I'll let you know. But this was from Goodwill, and it caught my attention not just because of the Batman, because sometimes things like that can be so dime a dozen, like there's just too many. Batman hats that I don't sell it but this was the Batman the movie and on the back it said Little Caesars and so I looked it up and it was just a promo a movie promo hat so it was only available for a short time so it sold for $25 minus the 10 percent and another hat so this hat actually I'm trying to remember this one I believe came from another thrift store and it was just a couple dollars. I was thinking this was outlet, but I, I don't think so. Um, this was from another local thrift store. The brand is called Free Fly and they are known for fly fishing and fishing clothing. And what's noteworthy about them is they use a lot of natural materials like bamboo, like their shirts will be made out of bamboo. And I have a few pieces. I don't have everything listed. And I have a couple items or at least one like sweatshirt listed right now, but I haven't had any sales from it. And this hat though sold like within like a day. It sold super fast. So fly fishing baseball hat, $20 minus 10%. Okay, so here, I think I showed this in one of my hauls, but this is um, discontinued, I guess you would call it, um, powder, makeup powder, Sally Hansen corn silk. You could tell like the packaging was a little bit beat up, but it was new in the packaging. And this blue one, I could, when I was at the thrift store, I paid $2 for it. I did a quick search. There was nothing really listed at the time, but I could see on Google, some older, an older sold that went for about $50 and it was a little bit different packaging, but it was the no color matte, you know, loose powder. And so this was from about, you know, Y2K era and discontinued makeup, 
you know, and things like that can be really good sellers. People are trying to get the stuff they had in the past and powder, you know, that's not going to go bad or get funky, at least not that I know of. So I went ahead and took a chance on that. There was another one that was a different variety that was also $2 and I picked that one up as well. This one sold for, it didn't sell for $59.99. It sold for $50. It was a offer to watchers who accepted it. Now, speaking of fly fishing hats, this one sold like right after the other one did. And at first I thought it was going to be uh, the same person, but it wasn't. Um, and actually that first one, I forgot to mention, they asked me if I ship my baseball caps in a box. And so we wrote back and assured them that, yes, all of our hats ship in a box. And so then he purchased. And so then this person bought theirs and they left a message after they bought it and said, said, you know, oh, you know, package it carefully. And if you get any more like this, that would be great. Let me know right away. So definitely interesting. And, and I'd heard that before from reselling groups that, you know, hat buyers want to make sure that their hats get to them in good condition. We use boxes. We use a it's like a 10 by four by four, you know, there's all different. I had bought these hat, these boxes for another use and we started using them for hats and it's like just really easy. And the hat plus the box usually ends up to be between nine and 10 ounces. So it ships first class and easy peasy. And we also put it in a bag to keep it waterproof before we throw it in the box. So after that guy's question, we decided we had so many hats listed, but we we were still finding them. And my husband kind of caught up on listing all of them that we decided to start putting it in our listings, you know, in the description that we ship in a, you know, safely in a box and everything like that. So that might help reassure the buyers and increase our sales. Okay, this was a bow tie. Now back last year, I came upon like 15 bow ties just like this. Well, not this pattern, but the brand was bow ties of Vermont and they're all silk. And uh, this one was my favorite. It's like blue tulips. And I thought, oh, that one's going to sell like really fast. And all the other ones sold first. <laughs> they were all different paisleys and you know, different patterns. And I was like, come on. And I think someone offered me last year, somebody offered me 15 and I was like, no way. And so this one's been sitting for a while and I would have like ended it and relisted it, you know, coming up on spring, but somebody offered us $15. And so we just took it. <laughs> Should have just taken it last year. Oh, well. Okay. So I'm not going to talk much about the auctions that we had that ended because that was that separate video. I will try to link the video here. Um, it was the auctions that we ran and it was like a little vintage spotlight on Hadley. So check it out if you haven't looked at it, but here's one of the items from those auctions. It was this, the tray to the whole set and the auctions ended the, for this piece ended at one Oh five 26. And so that was great. I had about seven, six or seven different um, auctions for this set of like this tea set, this little child's tea set by Hadley. And um, I think all of my buyers were in Kentucky. So that did not surprise me at all. Okay. So go check out that video. If you haven't seen it yet, you can see the what sold on the rest of those pieces. This was just a wool beanie. We were picking these up. Um, my husband probably picked this one up at that outlet center last year. Um, it didn't sell for 25. I think it was an offer. We'd had this listed since last winter. So I think we took an offer for 15 on this one as well. It's a nice hat. I pulled it out to ship and I was like, oh, it's nice and thick. So we, I don't know if my husband had ended and relisted ever or whatever, but we're just happy to move winter stuff through because we're, believe it or not, even though it was negative one when I woke up today, it'll be soon 
past the winter buying season and we'll have to be moving on. Okay, Ibex. Ibex is a really good brand to keep an eye out for. The items are all going to be wool. Um, they have a cool little logo. Let me see. You can see the Ibex looks like the animal Ibex. And I was so excited because I was at a thrift store that just recently um, we were we were talking about it and I don't know. They just, the prices have gone up on a lot of things at that thrift store. They have gotten people, you know, they've gotten people in that are checking brands for sure. And so they, you know, men's Lululemon shorts were $46 one day at this thrift store. And you can barely sell the Lulu, those Lululemon shorts for more than 30, 35. So anyway, I just was kind of discouraged with some things and then that day I was looking around and I saw these and they somehow maybe didn't know that brand and um, they were short sleeve wool shirts which is kind of odd but there was two of them and they were only six dollars a piece but it was 50% off day and so I got them for three dollars each and so it sold for 45 but with the 10% off so that was a pretty good return on investment for those. So keep an eye out. Ibex is a good brand. This was one of my husband's sales. He's had this listed for a while. He always has a bunch of little bits and pieces of hardware and things like that that he either picks up or he's got it left over from jobs or whatever. So this he sent out an offer for $7 and then they paid shipping and we might have made a dollar or so on the shipping because he just did calculated and then we get a little bit of a discount with our shipping. So anyway, little sale. See, they don't, they're not all big ones. This coffee mug sold so fast. I was so surprised. I, it's, it's a coffee shop in Chicago, I assume. I did a little bit of research real quick, but I don't always, it doesn't always stick in my head. So, um, there's mugs by, for this coffee company, um, in, on eBay right now, but they're all very, they're diner shaped mugs and they sell. So I would pick this up again, no problem. Um, this one had kind of an interesting shape and the brand that made the mug was not neutral and I found a web article about them and you know just interesting information but I wasn't sure there was anything in it that would actually help sell it any faster but surprisingly it sold overnight to Japan so I listed it for $16.99 and I guess he got the 10% I'm pretty sure he did I was wondering about that with um, international sales and it might depend on if they're on the U.S. site or if they're shopping from their own country site. So I don't know. I don't know how that works. Anywho. Okay. So $16.99 or 10% off and I paid 99 cents at Goodwill and listed it pretty quickly and it sold overnight like I said. Uh, this was something that I think my husband found. I totally forgot to ask him the story. He might have found it on our trip, on our road trip coming back. So it was a thermos, $25 minus 10%. These my husband and sons bought at a yard sale down the street last summer, and they watched them. I don't know if he meant to do free shipping. We don't usually do that on anything, but... Like I explained in my um, auction video recently, sometimes it switches while you're listing and you gotta try to you gotta try to catch it. you know, I have to get better at looking at each listing before you know after it launches and making sure nothing has gotten changed. So he possibly just put free shipping to get it to move faster or something but Anyway, got some use out of it, and then we moved it on. So that's a win. So here's the other corn silk 
powder. So this actually did sell the same week, not to the same buyer, but to somebody else. Um, I forgot to say, I think the first powder, corn silk powder uh, listing went overseas to somebody else, to another country, and this one was, low, you know, domestic shipping. This one was not an offer, but they did get the 10% off. I had picked this up at a thrift store for like two or three dollars and I it was my husband's size and he uses DeWalt tools and so I thought he would like it but I don't know <laughs> he said it was nice but I think he thought it would sell better and so he listed it but they just they don't sell that well so he said he was about to pull it and keep it and um, then it sold like with an $18 offer so yeah, I don't think I'd pick up. He said the stuff is really nice condition and quality. He said he just, he saw that there's just so much out there. So the resell isn't that great. Okay, Theory. Now I've heard about Theory as the brand before from other resellers and other YouTubers. So I was excited when we were in um, North Carolina at their thrift stores, all the clothing is flat rate. And so this was like a shirt. So it was like four or five dollars. And it was new with tags. And I was like, new with tags theory. Oh my goodness. And the only problem it had was the security tag was still on the sleeve. You know, those things that they're supposed to remove when you leave a store. And... I already had a shirt at home with one of those and my husband had been meaning to try to figure out how to remove it and I thought, you know, theory for five dollars and all we have to do is get this thing off and look, MSRP on this was like five hundred dollars originally. Isn't that crazy? And they someone had bought it more at like two sixty, two seventy. And so Anyway, so my husband figured it out. He got, we bought it. He got the thing off while we were out there. I listed it at my folks' house. Now, I listed it closer to two fifty, like, you know, the starting price. And then I was kind of hearing overall that, you know, it just doesn't have as high of a resale value, even new with tags. I had looked at comps. I think there was one that had sold for closer to 200 or at least 150 but recently I just took a look at it and I ended it and I posted it again for a hundred bucks and I said let's just move some stuff through it's all wool and I just want my winter stuff to go so it sold pretty quickly the second time around hundred dollars minus ten percent now Removing the thing, I'm not going to go into it too much because there's YouTube videos about it. And, you know, anyway, there's different methods. There's magnets and there's fire and there's, you know, brute force. <laughs> so I think my husband used a combination of a lot of those. Now, Spider, S-P-Y-D-E-R, that is a brand that I am not really picking up. I have a few pieces that have... I've sold a couple pieces and they took a really long time. I've got one or two pieces listed that are like, I don't know why. Um, this I found not that long ago. And the only reason I grabbed it was because it was a down filled vest and I, um, it was pretty cheap and I thought, you know what, let's just go ahead and do this and let's, you know, we'll just try to flip it quickly. Solds were okay. So I didn't sell it for 40, but I took an offer for 25. And one thing I've seen in other YouTubers videos recently is that Spider is sold at Costco now. And so that really ends up dropping the resale value on, on a product. So glad to have moved it fairly quickly. Okay, so this is a bomber jacket, vintage advertising, very western looking, um, kind of heavy duty coat. You know, there wasn't anything on the front, but on the back we have a tool company and that's advertising Makita power tools. 
So again, like the DeWalt, you know, it just doesn't seem to be the type of thing that a lot of people are interested in. And then most of the advertising is for the local tool company. Now, we just thought the jacket looked really awesome. Anyway, and my husband just like loved, I brought these jackets home and he just loved it. And so he had like some crazy price on it. And finally we, this was, I think last, the end of last winter. And so my husband, you know, he was going through and like ending listings and relisting and dropping prices. And so he dropped the price on this to like to a hundred and we, he did an offer to someone they countered back at $50 and 99 cents. And we talked about it and he's like, they're so awesome. You know, he was getting a little emotional, <laughs> emotionally attached. And I just was, we said, let's just move it through. They're bulky coats taking up. So there was two, two different styles completely, but I'll show you the other one in a minute. And so we got the $50 offer and we were like, okay, great. So excited about that. Let's just move it through, right? Because we got talking about it. If my husband and I want to do this, he can always do some construction or remodel type things on the side when we need money. But um, for the most part, he just is really interested in just reselling with me. And we talked about the fact that it's really about cash flow. Like you really just need to be having money come in, right? As long as you're making a profit, which I paid like $5 for these, um, these coats. So anyway, to make, you know, to get 50 bucks, five to 50, we're okay with that. Right. So there's more to the story, but let me go through a, something else first. Okay. This hat I did get at the clearance center. It's vintage Arizona snowball ski resort 60th, 60th anniversary. It's got dates right on it. So 1998, I knew it was a Y2K nineties hat. And I was like, ah, sure. It's going to cost me hardly anything. Throw it in the cart. So it sold for $25 minus the 10%. So that was exciting. Um, and my husband was like, really, who's going to want this hat when I brought it home? <laughs> so he's learning. <laughs> He's learning to trust me, although he picks up stuff that I would never pick up and he sells it too. So we're even. Okay. So here's the other jacket, you know, an athletic varsity kind of jacket and well, maybe not varsity baseball, whatever, but it also is for Makita tools. It was obviously the same person, LaSalle tools, that big, that same company. Another just really awesome looking coat. And so after we had sold the first coat for $50.99, $50.99, the buyer messaged us and said, I would like to buy the second coat for $50.99, but I don't want to pay any extra shipping because I'm already paying shipping on the first coat. So we had a big discussion about this because we were trying to figure out, I don't know where the buyer lived. And I said, do we want to just say, well, we can combine, but we need to tell you because the coats are not, they weren't light. So it wasn't going to cost nothing to, to send a second jacket. So we just went back and forth, back and forth. And then finally we said, you know what? I said, it's a hundred dollars plus whatever he's paying in shipping, say 10 to $12, you know, it's basically like we've got $112 to sell two jackets with free shipping, All right? This is kind of the way we had to like readjust our thinking to look at it. And we both said, you know what, we're okay with that. Let's just move it through. They move on and we can move on to something else. So we accepted his offer um, I added best offer to the second listing. I, I just took the shipping off of it and then he disappeared. <laughs> I was like, oh great. I was like, oh well, he hadn't paid for the first one. We'll just figure it out. So the next morning, fortunately though, he paid for, he paid for both of them. My husband figured out we could fit them both into a large flat rate box. And so we paid like 17, $18 for that. So yeah, I mean, we probably made 
35 40 dollars on each coat so cannot argue with that this was a tiny little pin that kind of that goes on like a german hat um it's been bumping around here for a long time my husband had it listed for a long time last year when he was listing a lot he wanted to do a bunch of little things so i don't know he went through my jewelry and found this and listed it and it it, I think he had a pretty high price on it. So it's one of the ones he ended and relisted. And we took a best offer of $15 pretty quickly after he relisted it. Foot Joy, Dry Joys. Um, Foot Joy can be okay. I'm still kind of learning what, um, what does better than the other. I think the Dry Joys are a good one to keep an eye out for. Let me show you the tag FJ, so Foot Joy Dry Joys. And this is just a vest, golfing, golfing vest. So kind of windbreaker type material, soft shell, it says, but and um it was $35 minus the 10%, and it sold within a couple days. Wrangler, I think we picked these up on our trip somewhere along the way. Um anyway, $35 minus the 10%. Squishmallow. My husband had gotten into buying Squishmallows last year. He was kind of, he was buying them at the drugstore and doing all sorts of things. And this is, I think, the last one we had left. And it was just kind of sitting there, taking up half a bin because these things are so big. <laughs> anyway, sold finally for $25 with 10% off. And here was another older listing. You know, this probably could have benefited from a dark background. Um, I think my husband listed this last year, but it's just kind of a fun little clock that you can see the insides. Made in the USA and that sold for $35 with the 10% off. Okay, so we're still going. I hope you guys are still with me. I told you it was so much of a better week this week, but let's go ahead and go over to Poshmark and look at some of the things that sold over there. So I cross post most, so our, our process or our flow is that most listings go onto eBay first. So they go onto eBay, my husband lists on eBay, I list on eBay, and then eBay requires the most as far as item specifics and things that need to be filled out and everything. And so then I open up my Vendu. So I use Vendu for cross listing, for cross posting. Um, I went ahead and I, I'll add to this video down in the description, I'll add my, my little referral code or link if you want to try it out. I think it's a 25% off your first month to check it out. Um, anyway, so I, and I do, yes, it's my affiliate kind of link. So I'll get um, a little bit of um, a little bit of payment for if you sign up and keep using it basically. So anyway, the, I open up Vendu and so then I pull the listings from eBay and pull them into Vendu. And then from there, I just kind of slowly trickle them over to Poshmark, Depop, Etsy, wherever I think they should go. Um, for a while when we were doing more with Mercari, um, I would cross post things into there. So it works really well for us. Um, as you can see, I had quite a few sales on Poshmark and so they were items that had been on eBay and could have sold in either place. So yeah, some things sell totally on eBay pretty quickly. I don't, I don't cross post immediately. I usually wait a day or two and then I move them over to Posh, and then sometimes they sell immediately on Posh, so you just have a different audience, which I think is really helpful. So it just kind of expands your audience a little bit. So this is one of the low price items I included just because for learning purposes, I have a hard time resisting a nice shirt. <laughs> um, I like selling men's shirts, and this was an Eddie Bauer um, Eddie Bauer does not have super high resale, I found, unless it's like 
goose down or something really special or vintage or whatever. Um, Eddie Bauer, the store, runs pretty hefty sales. And so I think people who like Eddie Bauer just go buy it new. Or they want a super deep discount. So I just, I see it's nice quality. And so I see this and I'm like, somebody's going to want that. And I buy it and like, I don't even know. I might have made a dollar on this <laughs> after fees and everything like that. Because I think I bought this at Goodwill. And so I didn't pay a dollar for it. I paid more than that. Um, so anyway, I might have just broke even on that one. So I, this was a while back, so I've curbed myself from, from buying shirts, no matter how nice they are, if the, if the sell-through just isn't working. Anyway, I thought I would share that one little lesson <laughs> for, with you. Okay, so this was actually kind of interesting, and there's a little bit of a story. Yes, I know this video is like crazy long. Um, so... Right in the middle of our auctions ending the other night, we're right in the middle of like something ending at 100 and something ending at 90. And we were like, no way. And then I get a, a Poshmark notification that we sold this coat that we'd had listed for a little while. And it sold for $200 on Poshmark. So the thing with this is the brand itself. Let's go down. Let's find a picture. Here we go. The brand itself, you know, hand tailored, especially for Barcelino by Ravazola. Okay. That's not important. What's important is what the wool, the wool that it's made out of is by Loro Piana. Okay. We might've mentioned that brand before, but this is the little label that you want to look for inside of wool coats and blazers. And this one was super fine wool and cashmere. So that was really nice. Now get this, my husband found this at that clearance center in the bins last year. And I think he paid $10 for his whole big bag of stuff. Okay, so just a, a nice overcoat. Now here's why I like Poshmark, why Poshmark is interesting to me. Um, I got a message from the buyer when he got it the other day and I still don't know exactly what's going to happen. Nothing's happened since, but if you look at the tag, it's an Italian maker, it's Italian fabric. The tag is in Italian, right? Made in Italy. So the size is European sizing 54 R. Okay. So everything's in, you know, is in Italian. So I don't think that we specifically, when my husband did this, let me look at his, no, he just kind of did the basics. So he didn't specify that it's European sizing. Okay. But like on Poshmark, correct me if I'm wrong, you need to put the tight in the title, what the size like is. Um, cause you want, you know, if you put a different size here and then it's not, doesn't say that on the tag, then a buyer can come back and be like, you know, the size is wrong and Poshmark is going to be like, yeah, it doesn't match the tag. Forget it. So we have it all matched up. Now, what I probably might have done is put, you know, this, this is most likely European sizing. Please check the measurements. I would have added that little thing. So we get a message from the buyer that he says, oh, the coat is beautiful, but it's, it's Italian sizing and it doesn't fit me. Well, fortunately we had put measurements in the listing. And so I just said, I said, well, that's why now he didn't open a case. He was just messaging me. And I said, well, that's why we include measurements. It's always when you're buying pre-owned, it's always a good idea to compare measurements to an item that you have, blah, blah, blah. Now, if Poshmark had said, nope, you got to send it back, you can, you know, he can send it back, blah, blah, blah. I would have been fine with it. If this had sold on eBay and this happened and they sent it back, I totally would have been fine with it. But I was just kind of curious what Poshmark would do. Well, once I replied that, the buyer went away. 
So on on Poshmark, technically they you can't return items for fit, um, as long as the item is as advertised. You know, you can't just get it and be like, oh, it doesn't fit. They'll say, okay, just go ahead and resell it yourself. And so that's a nice feature of selling on Posh, but I always try to make sure to include measurements and things like that so that people can make as good of a decision as they can. So he never answered back, so I don't know if he's just going to try to sell it himself again or he never escalated it to Poshmark. He, um, maybe he found someone else to give it to or something like that. I don't know. He still has a little bit of time. I don't think the funds have been released to me yet. And so anyway, anything could still happen, but I think I'll be okay since we had the measurements in the listing. Okay. I'll try to go faster now. Oh dear. Another hat. We sold this hat. I don't know where this hat came from. Sorry, my computer's slow, probably because this video is too long. Here, I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to start it again. Be a better idea to have a couple shorter videos that I'll stitch back together again. Anyway, this is another hat. I It's new with tags. I don't even know. I don't remember picking it up, so my husband must have bought it somewhere. Rogue Fitness, never heard of it, sold, got quite a bit of attention on eBay, cross-posted it to Poshmark, and uh, took a $15 offer pretty quickly. Then this is a necktie. I like to pick up these tartan plaid neckties um, made in Scotland, and they usually have the name of the, you know, they have its name of the plaid moray of a doll at all anyway it's usually right on there this might not have been vintage but anyway tartans are usually pretty popular and sold for 22 on Poshmark. this is a okay if you remember my thrifting video where the cabin fever one and my husband had brought this over to me and we just said, yeah, let's get it based on its look. And it sold on Poshmark for $55. Good gravy. What happened to all my links? This is not good. Hold on a second. Some tabs in there that shouldn't have been in there. Who knows what happened? Um, this was also a find from our little outlet center, our little bins. Um, Garnet Hill, it's a kind of a nice brand. This was 100% cashmere. It had a little bit of wear, uh, you, you know, it had, it had been used and worn or whatever. And it sold for $18. It probably would have been closer to 25 or 30. Um, the tag was kind of coming off. And um, like I said, a little bit of pilling or whatever. And anyway... So that was a nice sale that went pretty quickly. I think Garnet Hill is a catalog company. Okay, Ben Davis is a good brand to keep an eye out for. It's workwear, and they've been around a while. They're very retro looking. Um, my husband did use vintage in his listing because it did have, the logo is not the current one on there. And it's really hard to figure out age on these pieces <laughs> because of, um, you know, the look is very rockabilly, very vintage looking. Um, I just found a pair of pants and my husband's like, those are vintage. And I'm like, no, I don't think so, honey. They're, they just have, it's the same look for the past, you know, decades. It's work wear. So the style doesn't change very much. Now, if you saw my video, I'm going to link it up here again. If you saw my video about um, things to list before the new year, we talked about workout clothing, and this quarter zip was in my pile of things, my profit pile, 
And I said, I don't even know what this brand is. I don't even remember buying this. I have no idea why I bought it. Look for it in a what sold and see if it actually sells. <laughs> and it did like right away out of all the pieces that I listed. It sold like first. And so what's interesting is that um, when I looked up comps, comps were not really that great. I mean, I found their website and I don't know. It just, it just totally surprised me. It got a watcher on eBay right away. I cross posted it to Posh and it sold like that same day that I cross posted it. So I guess I would pick it up again. Anatik, Anatik. I don't know what it is, but anyway, it was a quick sale. Some boots I think we had uh, kicking around <laughs> that needed to be listed, and we found them, and my husband got them listed, and they sold pretty quickly. Sorrells are they're hit or miss on different styles, and this actually, yeah, sold pretty quickly. That was nice. Now, I told you earlier about the Theory shirt had the, the security tag, and this was the other shirt that I had had sitting at home with the security tag on it. So I put it in my husband's to-do pile. He got the tag off, listed it. We sold it for $40 on Posh. We love selling cool, finding and selling K-U-H-L, cool. This I also found at our little clearance center, um, an Ariat, Ariat. Um, I'm in a Montana, obviously, so there's a lot of Western things are kicking around here. So I was actually surprised this was at the clearance center and not at their regular store. Um, there really wasn't anything wrong with it. And, um, anyway, yeah, it sold pretty quickly for $26. Carhartt, it's a woman's coat. I thought about keeping this, but when I need something kind of heavy duty, I wear down. So I don't really, I don't think I would end up using this, but Carhartt jacket women sold for 55. I got that in North Carolina at a Goodwill. Now it wouldn't be a what sold if I didn't have some chunky nineties Y2K shoes to show you. <laughs> Now these didn't start off on eBay. These I just went straight to Poshmark because my last two chunky shoes from that era have sold on Poshmark and they both sold for $30. These were a little bit different. I up bumped the price a little bit, but the condition was not that great as you can see here. And so I had them up like 40 or so and somebody offered me, I put them on Depop. They were getting lots of attention over on Depop too. Um, and I got a $30 offer and I said, you know what? That's my sweet spot. These were found at the clearance center as well. So I didn't even pay a dollar. I don't think for these cinch, like I said, I'm in Montana. Cinch is a Western brand and they, it's jeans. The jeans can sell pretty well. And I find the shirts somewhat often. Sometimes they're kind of beat up. This was modern fit, so not necessarily a Western fit. And it sold for $22. And I actually found a couple more um, in the larger sizes. No, they're extra large as well, I think. But I found a couple more like in brand new shape. Um, so my husband got those listed and I'm working on getting them cross-posted over to Poshmark as well. This little teapot, I just, I'm a little teapot. Anyway, I got this at a thrift store locally. I didn't know anything about it. I still don't really, I couldn't really find one like it, except there were some similar ones on Amazon. So I didn't make any claims as to age or anything like that. And I've just had it on eBay and Posh and some different places. And so when I got a $23 offer, I went ahead and took that. This sweater, I love this sweater. Janssen. So yeah, the, the company that does bathing suits. See, you got the little swimmy lady. Um, this vintage cardigan. You know, vintage men's cardigans are like pretty popular right now. 
and very grandpa core and such academia this would fit in with that anyway I love that sweater so I was happy to get $53 for this on Poshmark and like I said the other platforms were pretty slow this week um, Ruby Lane not worried it'll come back I just have to make sure I get some things more things listed on there this week and Etsy what was interesting is I had two sales on my Pish Posh flatware store and um, surprising just because I only I don't have hardly anything listed in there but I had thrown I'd always done pretty well with cookie presses on Etsy so I decided to just throw it you know put it there anyway so it sold for forty dollars just a manual one you know it's not battery operated or anything and then I sold this pie server very mid-century modern atomic um, the brand is Marcrest and the the pattern is called Ebony Elegance. It's a very, very popular pattern with the mid-century crowd. So it took a while to sell. I mean, if I had been really active in that Etsy shop with flatware and different things, it would have sold a lot sooner. But it has a nice little star kind of pattern on it. So $17 for that. Now the one sale I did have on Ruby Lane was this necklace from the 1928 Jewelry Company. And it's one of my favorite companies to um, resell. There, it's from like the 90s Y2K. It's always very Victorian, you know, vintage inspired. This one was marked, it did have a hang tag that said 1928 on it, as you can see. Um, but if it doesn't, or if it's not marked, you learn to look at Let's see. You learn to look at the pattern. Ay, ay, ay. It's not wanting me to do that. Anyway, there we go. And it's gone. Alrighty, sorry about that. Anyway, so there's like a printed, you know, a printed kind of scrolly pattern on the back of their brooches and earrings and things like that that helps identify it. But we'll talk about that again another time. This was my only Depop sale. It was early last week. So, um, gotta love cross posting. I had this on eBay, I had it on Posh, but it was somebody on Depop who wanted this Seattle Sonics pullover. I don't think it was terribly vintage, but it has a good vintage kind of look to it. It was 2XL, Champion, and yep, just had a nice look. So, Anyway, those were my sales for the week. If you're still here, thank you, thank you so much for sticking around. Hopefully you got some work done while you were watching this or listening to me go on and on. Um, like I said, I, I have to kind of balance how long the video is between wanting to show you the things that have sold because I know I love what sold videos because I learn the most from those types of things. So... Anyway, thank you so much again. Oh, this did sell for $75, so that was a really good score. Anyway, <laughs> okay, I will let you all go. Happy selling this week. Um, it's supposed to be super, super cold and snowy this week for us, so I will probably be home and listing, and my husband as well. And so hopefully we'll have some more great solds for you for next week. Thanks, everybody, and... Have a great week.